What is up to all my creatives out there? Charlie Ping is here, t-shirt design in Photoshop. And we're already on episode 21 of my merch design series, which is insane. And um, the first 20 something episodes were just t-shirt designs, but I will be focusing on hats and a bunch of other merch design elements. So definitely uh, keep watching this series. I think we're gonna do some really cool stuff with it in 2021. With that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoy episode 21 of Merch Design. This is a t-shirt design in Photoshop tutorial, my design process, enjoy. If this is your first Charlie Pinkus tutorial, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Let's get it. The first thing I did was found a picture of a dove for this design because that is the central part of the design. And then I imported it into Photoshop by copying and pasting it. And um, we're gonna say bye to that other dev. It wasn't a very good one to use, but I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool to cut this out real quick. And you guys are probably asking yourself, why don't you use the pen tool or Adobe's AI to just cut out the background? You could do that too, it's up to you. Um, everybody has their own way of doing things. I just like this way. Next, I'm using the camera raw filter. You can find that on the very top under filter. And uh, this is an awesome tool because it works just like Lightroom. I can create some really nice contrast change the colors of my image if I need to. It's a good idea to add this as a smart object to your image though. That way uh, you can work non-destructively and if you want to delete it later, you can easily do that. Next, I just want to make a quick circle or an ellipse, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to use the type tool to type on the path of the ellipse. With that, we can create a nice arc on the text and it just looks really clean. And then I'm just gonna quickly choose a font. I believe I've been using this font called Grotesque for a while now and it's really, it's just a really clean font and I think it works with this street style. Now I'm just gonna use the handles on this path to maneuver the text around it so I can get it centered and I'm just gonna quickly type something out. I'm kind of just making stuff up as I go on this one. I never really have a plan for what kind of text I wanna to add to a design when I film these episodes. I just kind of come up with something on the spot. So forgive me if they're kind of cheesy. Just changing the color of the type and adding some different effects now if you go to the effects panel there's a bunch of different things you can do you can add bevels strokes gradients the list goes on have fun with it guys because obviously what i'm doing might not work for your design now um i don't think i ended up going with this final style that you're seeing right here i ended up changing it later on but again i'm one of those designers that i experiment a lot so sometimes things work for me and sometimes they don't so you're going to see a lot of that in this video but that's just normal that's my workflow Next, I went to this site that I always use and I pay for a subscription on this site and I wanted to find some barbed wire or something to use with the dove and I found this really awesome barbed wire shaped as a heart and I had to use that so I actually downloaded it and imported that into Photoshop. This file was a vector file so I ended up importing the EPS file and this is really easy because it's already transparent for me. All I really have to do is mess with the colors of it. So another thing you can do is if you download like let's say an AI file, just open it up in Illustrator real quick, copy it, 
from its background. Basically just get rid of the background out of that file and then copy and paste it into Photoshop or you can click and drag it into Photoshop, whatever works for you. But now I have my heart shaped barbed wire and man, it looks pretty cool, but it needs a lot of work. I didn't want my design to look so flat. So my goal was to make this stand out more. So in order to do that, I needed to uh, apply some effects to the barbed wire. And you guys see me using these effects all the time under filter and filter gallery. I'm always adding a, a torn edge effect and grain, sometimes a stamp effect to give it this gritty look. And I love this so much. And all of my tutorials that I go over, I usually use this effect. So it's, it's a very common thing for me to use. I just love it. So um, once I was done playing with this, I ended up having to figure out how to make it intertwine with the dove. From here, I changed the text color to red because I think it pops really nice against the white dove. And the barbed wire was cool and all, but it's kind of a silver color. Well, I turned it to white and it just conflicts with the white dove, obviously. You don't want white on white unless you have a really strong drop shadow or something, but I don't like that. So I changed it to red. And as you can see, I'm just messing with the, the different options here. And once I figured out the right color for the barbed wire, I moved on to basically just make it look like it's intertwining with the dove. In order to do that, you just have to duplicate the layer a bunch and mask out certain parts of it. And um, I'm gonna let you guys enjoy this little part. Remember layers work in order. So whatever's on top is going to be on top, right? So I have one of the barbed wires under the dove and I duplicated it and put one above it. And then I added a layer mask and I'm just masking out the parts I don't want to be in front of the dove simple as that you can use a hard brush for this you don't need a soft brush honestly because you don't want any soft gradients happening you want it to be a precise cut if that makes sense and now it's time to mess with the text even further and start making some minor adjustments to it just to make it fit better i ended up actually just getting rid of this and changing the format altogether but i'm just going to let you guys see the entire process um but for the most part, I just thought it was kind of lacking on top there. So I ended up making it so much larger just to fill up some more space above the dove's wings. I ended up changing the entire format of the text, as you can see, and hiding the heart now because I'm trying to rework the design. It wasn't working out for me. So I ended up actually adding a an outer glow to the dove to give it this drop shadow almost, just some shadow to make it look like it's in front of Urban Colt. And then once I added that drop shadow, I made a duplicate copy, converted it to a smart object and dragged it above everything. And this way I have full control over what's in front of the dove and what's behind the dove, if that makes sense. So I'm masking out some parts of the wing to reveal the urban cult name. And from here, I do need to add a drop shadow or an outer glow to urban cult to make it stand out. Now it's time to add that barbed wire back and kind of place it where I think it will look good. And this is strategy right here, because sometimes, you know, you can cover up certain letters that you don't want to cover up. So you do have to kind of plan it a little bit and figure out what, um, you know, what you could sacrifice, I guess you can say, because there is sacrifice that has to be made in order to make this design work. So, you know, it's a matter of, am I going to cover up the U, the R, the B, the C, what, what am I going to cover up, you know? So to give the barbed wire some color, I added a hue and saturation layer or adjustment layer and made sure colorize was checked. And I just basically picked this reddish color and I just clipped it to the heart layer to make sure it's only affecting that layer. Now it's time to make that barbed wire kind of intertwine with everything. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to duplicate it, send it behind certain elements or certain layers and add a layer mask to certain layers. That way I can just mask out what I don't want to see. And this is where sacrifice uh, comes into play because I have to figure out what I wanna show and what I don't wanna show. And if I hide certain parts of the text, it might be hard to read. You want it to be legible. So just be careful when doing this.
now it's time to add some finishing touches. So I hit T on my keyboard. I'm gonna start typing out New York City and I'm just gonna really just mess around with some different styles cause I don't wanna just type out New York City and call it done. So I ended up actually using a rectangle um, kind of going through New York City to make it look like it's crossed out. And then right here, I'm just taking that line that I used to cross out New York City. I'm duplicating it, creating a black version of it. So a version that blends in with my dark background. And then I'm just basically offsetting it. So it creates this little stroke border, if that makes sense. And it just looks really cool. It looks like it's actually cutting through New York City. Really, really like that. But uh, once you do that, this is what you get. And then I change the color to this red color just to match the heart-shaped barbed wire. And we're pretty much done with the design. Um, from here, we can add our textures and mock it up, make some small adjustments. As you can see right here, I'm changing the font color again. Urban Coal, I felt like it needed to be a little bit more yellow, so we went with that, but uh, that's it. And I, I don't know what else to say. Like, this is what it takes to make a t-shirt design, and there's so many different ways to do it. So experiment, have fun. That's the most important thing, guys. Merch design episode 21 is in the bag and I'm gonna read some comments now that you guys wrote to me on my videos. Let's go to the first comment. Whether they're bad or good, we're still gonna freaking read them. The first comment today is by Thomas and I cannot say your last name but I will put his username right here on the screen. He says, hi Charlie, great video every day. You have strong passion. Can you please tell me what monitor you are using for uh, editing and design? Have a great day and thank you for your inspirations. dude." Thank you, man. People like you inspire me, believe it or not. Um, the monitor that I am using that's right here is actually a Philips monitor. I think I only spent like 250 for this monitor too, so it's not too bad on price. It's a pretty good budget option. I will link that on my Amazon page for you, Thomas. Thank you, man. Tim Tam says, I've always loved the 2016 MacBook Pro. Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, etc. works perfectly on it, but my computer is so slow it crashed. So now I'm looking for a new laptop, might get this new 2021. Uh, Windows makes some amazing laptops, especially the Dell XPS 15, a little pricier. Um, if you wanna save some money, honestly, I would probably go with the Mac mini that I have. Yes, it has its issues, but it starts at like 699 or something like that. It's really cheap. Or you could get the MacBook Air M1, and that is Apple's latest MacBook Air, and it runs like just over $1,000, or maybe even just under $1,000. So it's pretty cheap. But um, do your research, figure out exactly what you wanna do. Anyway, Tim Tam, um, good luck on your search. Thank you for the comment. Next comment is by Saba, and he said, dude, you are pro. Dude, you are pro, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. I don't really actually consider myself a pro. I'm just somebody that loves graphic design and loves teaching it, honestly. And uh, whether or not I'm the best in the world, I, I really don't know. You guys can attest to that if I'm the best in the world, but I'm, I know I'm not, simple as that but I love what I do and I love teaching you guys. So anyway, Saba, thank you so much for the comment. Your comments mean a lot to me. Every time you like my video, it means a lot to me. I want you guys to know that it counts. That's how you can give back to me. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being a part of my creative community. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.